The science instruments can't function all by themselves. They get plugged into the Hubble Space Telescope, and there's an entire infrastructure in there that enables them to do the great science that they do and has to work properly in order for any of these instruments to get their science down to the ground. We have the opportunity on these servicing missions not just to upgrade the instruments, but also to upgrade that infrastructure. Hubble has six gyros in total, and over time they wear out. We're down to three working gyros, but we're only using two. We're keeping one in spare. And in the next servicing mission, we're going to replace all the gyros that we have full gyro capability for years to come. Well, we have six gyros, and what we do is we package two of them into a box with a handle. It's not an easy task to replace these, these rate sensor units, these three boxes. The star trackers have these long tubes on them it's called sunshades. So when the astronauts have to replace the gyros, they have to sort of wedge themselves into this very small area without touching these sunshades. Gyros help us in two ways. When we move from target to target, the gyros help the computer know how quickly we're turning. Once we get locked in on a target, those gyros help us steady the vehicle so that we can collect all that scientific data and get those great pictures. We're going to put in a new fine guidance sensor uh, to take the place of one that has shown evidence of, of uh, failing and not, not being long for this world. Well, the fine guidance sensors actually are the components that find the particular observation and they pick two guide stars very close to what is being observed and the fine guidance sensors then zero in on those guide stars. They lock in on them and now you know you're pointing in the right place in the sky and then it transfers over to the rate sensor units, the gyroscopes, to hold it steady on that object. When you're working with the Hubble Space Telescope program, anything can happen. Um, and in fact, just a few weeks before we were scheduled to launch back in October, um, the data handling system, the SIC and DH, went down. The SIC and DH it is critical to the Hubble Space Telescope because without it, you have no telescope, you have no science information. NASA administration decided that it would be worth it to postpone the servicing mission so that we could get the flight spare um, and test and verify it and replace it on this servicing mission. The SIC and DH function is to take the data from the science instruments and it formats it, it puts it in a command sequence that is then transmitted to the ground and then deciphered back on the ground. Without it, you have no science information and by putting a, a new uh, SIC and DH up there, you gain the redundancy back and you're not one failure away from no science. The soft capture mechanism is a device that we're putting on the bottom of the telescope. Uh, we're going to convert Hubble from a shuttle interface, which grabs with some la three latches on the bottom of Hubble, to an exploration interface because we're using similar interface that our exploration program is using for the Orion capsule. So in five minutes we'll convert from a shuttle-based architecture to an exploration-based architecture for Hubble that will enable sometime in the future for us to dock another spacecraft, not the space shuttle, to the Hubble uh, for the purpose of making sure that at some point at its end of life uh, it can be safely disposed. The batteries we're operating on are the original batteries that were launched with the observatory in 1990. The design lifespan was five years, so these batteries are, are operating well past what they were designed for. It's time to change them out. We are losing capacity. We're installing uh, six new batteries arranged in two modules of three packs each. We're going to install a new outer blanket layer called a noble, which is a solid. It's not a uh, blanket anymore. It's a solid um, sheet. We designed a new outer blanket layer that can either lay on top of 
the degraded blankets, just cover them up. Or we will take off the blanket in order to install a new radiator against the bay door. And this is a very um, weather resistant new outer blanket layer that we have designed. So it should not degrade appreciably for the next 15, 20 years. So at the end of this servicing mission, where we've installed new cameras and upgraded all of this infrastructure, uh, the whole point of this is that the Hubble Space Telescope will be better than it's ever been in its history and will continue to produce this, this breathtaking and amazing science well into the next decade.